Hello everybody, good evening, welcome to the United Stand, and just like King Kong's backside, this show is going to be massive as we do start, bench, sell for about 20 Manchester United players for the Manchester United summer transfer window. The definitive fan opinion. Look away now if you're in the Man United squad because you're about to get the truth. And look in if you're Ineos or Ten Hag because you're about to get the truth. We're going to go through about 20 Manchester United players. You're going to get your opinions in the chat. I'm going to give you my opinions and we're going to do it. Let's get ready. How's it going to work, Mark? How can this work? Well, it works like this. You take a player, you put them on the screen and then you discuss whether you start, bench or sell them. So, before we get into all that though, it's a Boohoo Man show. If you don't know what Boohoo Man is, fantastic clothing, reasonably priced. You can get it online, links in the description or scan the QR code. They've got the lot. They've got hoodies like this, they've got gym wear, they've got fiber side wear, they've got bed wear, they've got coat wear, they've got everywhere. See what I did there? Um, which rhymes with there. Um, We've got 10% off with you with the code Goldbridge. They've already got a fantastic prices anyway, but you can get 10% off. And also, if they've got 30% off something, you can add the 10% on and you'll get 33% off. Check it out on the website, scan the QR code, or go through the link in the description. Get yourself some stuff like this. You want this on an evening to relax to your night and stand in with the code Goldbridge. Check it out with Boohoo Man. Um, just a little bit of topical news as well I wanted to bring in. Um... Uh, Harry Maguire's injured, but I've also got the Boohoo Man, Who Am I? I was born in England on the... I nearly forgot. I was born in England on the 27th of May, 1967. I don't know who this is, so I'm guessing with you. I started my career at Newcastle and was believed to have been on my way to Manchester United before last minute switch to Tottenham. I know who it is. Alex Ferguson once called me the best English player since Bobby Charlton, Sir Bobby Charlton. I left Spurs to join Lazio, where I'm still hailed as a legend despite only playing 43 games. Amazingly, during my, during my career, the only major tournament I ever won was the FA Cup, where I sustained a bad knee injury. I played 57 games for England, but was controversially left out of England's 1998 World Cup squad. It is, of course, Paul Gazza Gascoigne. What a different career he could have had if he'd come to Manchester United. Um, Boohoo Man, links in the chat, scan the QR code, get your 10% off with the code Goldbridge. Big shout out to them. Right, who is going to be player number one? on our start bench cell. And I can tell you, we have got well over 10 and somewhere under 19. Here we go. First player for you, Casemiro. Start, bench or sell this summer. Um, I am going to run polls on this, but I'm also going to... Um, well, yeah, we are going to run a poll. It's the best way of doing it. Um, but look, I think in relation to Casemiro for me, let me let me, let me me relay you the facts. And then while you're voting, I will come to mind when I can see a bit of your votes as well to make it fairer. Look, Casemiro is in his early 30s. He's on £300,000 a week. He's been injured twice this season. He picks up a lot of yellow cards. Um, if you let Casemiro go, there are there is talk we may even get as much as £30 million for him if he goes to Saudi Arabia. If he goes anywhere else, he's going nowhere. So he's only going to Saudi Arabia. That's the only place he can go. And if we got £30 million for Casemiro and he wanted to go to Saudi Arabia, I probably would do the deal. But there's a massive problem with that because you are basically rebuilding your midfield again. The positives with Casemiro are if you keep him, the influence he's got on the likes of Kobe Mainu, on whoever else the new midfielder is, you've got continuity, you've got experience in the dressing room. And as we saw in the second half against Aston Villa, he was world class in that game at Villa Park. So you're losing a lot of talent, a lot of experience and a lot of nurturing in the dressing room. And that can be a big hole if you allow him to go. So I get the fact that £30 million, I think for me, if he wants to go and it's Saudi Arabia, let him go because you can cash in and you can remove the wage. But if he doesn't want to go, this is not a deal I would be looking to you know, move forward myself. I think if he wants to go, let him go. If he doesn't want to go, we keep him, we bring another midfielder in and we use him as a role model, like Hobby says as well. Um, let's have a look what you've got. Uh, start, bench, sell. 48% of you are saying start, 19% of you are saying bench and 33% of you are saying sell. How does that actually work? Well, start means you want to keep him as a first team player. Bench means that you might want him to uh, progress to being more of a bit part player next year. And obviously sell means sell him. I will 
define it like this. I'm not going to sit on the fence. I am going to keep him. Unless he comes out with a transfer request himself, if the decision's up to me and I'm the director of Football Bridge, I'm going to keep him. If he knocks on my door and he wants to go, like, like with anybody, I'm probably going to let him go. Um, what's wrong with the volume? I, I, I don't know what's wrong with the volume here. Um, let me have a quick look. Um, bloody hell, it's really low. No, that's, that's, that's not the right one. Oh, God, it is low. I don't know why it had gone down. Sorry about that one. It's massively low. Sorry about that. It was very, very low. Sorry about that. Should be uh, should be a lot better now. Don't know why it does that sometimes. Don't know why it does that. Uh, thank you, Nigel. Uh, why is Dennis Law not as popular as the rest of the legends that make up the Trinity status? Yeah, Michael, that's got absolutely nothing to do with the show we're doing. So if we've got questions about the show, fine. But um, yeah, come on. So yes, I would keep Casemiro unless he wants to go. Next player we're going to go to uh, is this. And also staying in the midfield. So get ready to vote on this. Scott McTominay. We spoke about him this morning, of course. And um, th therefore, I suppose in many ways, we almost know the result of this one. I don't need to run a poll on it. 30% um, of you would keep him. 70% of you would sell him. Um I've got, to be honest, this one's going to be a very, very quick one for me. I think in relation to Scott McTominay, um, it's very easy. It's very easy. You let him go. I don't. The club aren't going to do that. The club are going to keep him, of course. We know that. But he's got a monetary value. He's been playing for the club for what feels like 20 years. He's still treated like he's 19. I think that with someone like Scott McTominay, he's only ever going to be at his very best, what he's been this season. A bit part player who can pop up with a goal. But I feel it's a bit chaotic. I don't think it's the way that we want to play. So I would be cashing in. And the positive is, if I was him, I'd be knocking on the door. I know he'd go, well, I love Man United. But, like, Phil Neville loved Man United. Nicky Butt loved Manchester United. I don't think we can use that as, oh, well, he loves Man United. And he shouldn't use that himself. He's got one career. Nicky Butt and Phil Neville, in their late 20s, went to play first-team football at Everton and Newcastle. He should be doing the same. He's not going to play first-team football for Man United very often. If he goes to a West Ham, he'll play every bloody week. And I think that's what he should do. Um, but that's up to him. I would sell Scott McTominay, and so would 70% of you. Next up, we've got Christian Eriksen. Um, so, look, get voting on this one. I think in relation to Christian Eriksen... It's, again, quite an easy, quick one for me. And we have got Rashford, Anthony, Bruno to come as well. So it's not just all the obvious ones we're going to do. Sean, thank you. Says you're a legend. Welcome to the members. Always nice to see so many badges in the chat supporting the channel. If you've got any really strong points, don't remember. Don't forget, we will read them out as a super chat. We're going to get through a lot anyway, but you can do that through the dollar sign. Uh, Hella says sell. Sunshade says sell. Ericsson sell says Nick. Um, 81% of you are sell with Christian Eriksen. I think that he played for Denmark yesterday. That is somewhat irrelevant. Uh, international football doesn't bother me. I think they, some Danish paper gave Rasmus a 2 out of 10 yesterday. Uh, apparently he got no service anyway. But um, look, how he plays for Denmark is irrelevant. Christian Eriksen, for me, was a really important player for Manchester United up until that Andy Carroll tackle over a year ago. He's never really come back since then. Um, the, de the development of Kobe Mainu has finished him. Um, and that's the, that's the circle of football. You know, he's into his 30s now. He's coming towards the end of his career. A younger player has come through. He's on about 140 grand a week. He could go and play in a slower league and play football. I think United, for me, it's absolutely 100% sell. It's, it's just, it, there's just no point. I, I don't even like using Ericsson as a sub anymore. I don't think he really offers anything. Unless you're going to... Well, one thing I will say about Ericsson is it's a shame that we never played him as a number 10. Same as Wan Mata. You know, same as Kagawa. We bought these number 10s and he was a number 10 in my opinion and we've never played him as a number 10. And funnily enough, I think if we played Ericsson as a 10, he might be useful to us, but we only ever play him as an 8 or a 6 and he hasn't got the legs for it. So... No, he's, he's got to go. He's got to go, in my opinion. And 80% of you say sell. 16% would, would keep him as a bench option. 4% of you would start him. 
Maguire out in now, left in England squad, says Dun Dan Davey. You you've got excited, Dan, and you've not actually thought it through. Um, next player we're going to do is, well, it's a big one. It's a big one. It's a very big one. I, you know, we're not scared of doing it. We don't shirk anything here for Player FC or anything, but uh, this one will be a big one as he whacks the poll into the chat. Remember, if you're not watching live, you can get your comments in below on what you would agree with and what you would do. Uh, Jude says Ericsson's drained as a footballer. How was the pro clubs, Mark? Says Curtis. I loved it. Hopefully I'll be back on tomorrow. Um, right, let me talk about this. Marcus Rashford, start, bench, sell next season. There's got so many of these are going to get clipped up by our editor as well. So I am of the opinion that the club will not sell him. Um, I'm of the opinion that Marcus Rashford, at his best, has to start for Manchester United. But I am also of the opinion that, and watching him for England last night, just hammered it home. It's not a Man United thing. He's playing for England. His head's down. There's a, there's a point in the game where England are losing 1-0 to Brazil. He's running in from the left wing. Foden's are arriving late. Watkins and somebody else are in the box. He's got about three seconds to put the cross in. Never looks at it. Runs into traffic. I mean, he's basically got the opportunity to put a cross in or take on four Brazilians. And he takes on four Brazilians and loses the ball. We've seen it time and time again for Manchester United. The guy is 26, 27. Like, how many years have people been saying Rashford needs to work on his final ball? He's not working on that final ball. When he gets the ball, this has go, been going on for three or four years. People have been saying for three or four years, the next step for Rashford is to learn to put the ball in the box or play a pass. And he very rarely does it. Doesn't want to do it then, does he? You know, I've played the game. You've played the game. If your manager and your coach is saying you need to learn to pass the ball more and you go on the pitch and you don't, it's like playing pro clubs. We've all played with H, doesn't want to pass, wants to get the shots. And that's absolutely fine because he scores a lot of goals. But if you're not scoring the goals, it becomes a problem. So, look, my problem is how does Rashford fit in a team that's meant to be a possession-based team? But I would keep and start for another year. I think it's worth another year in a more structured team. It's a little bit like the Ten Hag Out Brigade for me. The Ten Hag Out Brigade are not looking at the mitigating circumstances and next season could be a completely different season to this year. I would keep Rashford next season, but I would have it in my mind, pardon the pun, that if he carries on next season like this season, he ends up being a bench option and then you move him on. I would give him another year. 25% is madness, says Robert McCormack. Um, let's have a look what you've got. We've got 25% starting Rashford. We've got 20% benching Rashford. And we've got 55% selling Rashford. So there you go. There's your, there's your poll on that one. Um, obviously, I must add a retainer in here. The club are not going to sell him. Uh, from one controversial figure to another. I almost feel silly that we're actually doing this. But it is the fans who decide. And you are the democracy tonight. So Bruno Fernandes, start, bench, sell. Uh, for me, this again, has echoes of Rashford in the sense of I completely take on board that the style of football that Bruno Fernandes plays may not be conducive or compatible with the way we want to play as a possession-based team. However, there is a part of, there is a bigger part of me with Bruno that says if you had a higher line, a better midfield and a better front three, would Bruno still get the ball and blindly hit Hollywood balls? And if he did, he'd have to come out of the team. But I have seen Bruno playing with Portugal with players like Bernardo Silva, etc. And you do see a different Bruno. So for me, it's a start and it's a keep. Um, and again, like Rashford, I would keep him next season and I would see what he can do. And if it doesn't work, bench, sell next summer. That's 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 what I would do with Rashford. Um, 
64% of you would start Bruno, 15% of you would bench Bruno, and 20% of you would sell Bruno. I'm loving this, actually. We've never used the poll system for this, and I think it's it's great because start means you want to keep him starting. Bench means you want to put him on the bench. 20% obviously want to sell him. So interesting about that one. But I think, yeah, I'd certainly, we're not going to sell him. Uh, this is a bit of a novelty one. Um, I, I think if we'd done this in... January, December, there would have been a, a very, very different um, opinion on this one. But because of the way he's done a lot better since January, I think we may well end up with a different uh, outcome here. Now, what I would say about Anana is I'm still massively concerned about his handling. I think the way he palms the ball into danger isn't great. I don't think he's great at getting down to lower shots. I don't think that's going to change. I always start with the negative, of course. And I don't think Anana is going to learn to get down to the low shots. Think Cole Palmer at Old Trafford. Think the Harvey Elliott shot at the weekend. I also don't think he's going to learn to palm the ball away from danger. So I think there are still going to be goals that we concede that we wouldn't have conceded with a Van der Sar or a De Gea. On the flip side, he's been a lot better since January and many goalkeepers have started badly at United. De Gea, Schmeichel started badly. Now, to be fair, no one started as bad as Anana since uh, Tabisi or whatever his name was from Torino. Um, but I would also say about Anana, he is operating in a team that doesn't actually accentuate what he's good at. I.e., if we played a high line and he could be a sweeper keeper, we'd see a whole level to his game that we haven't seen yet. So it's definitely a start, it's definitely a keep, and it's definitely um, a see how it goes next season. And there's a few players like that. There's a few players that I wouldn't be looking to sell in the summer. Rashford, Bruno, Anana. There's a couple of others I'm going to mention as well, where I think next season's their definitive season. And if it next season he's still costing us goals and it's not working, then you have to put your hands up and you have to move them on after year two. But I would certainly keep him. Um 81% of you start, that's good. 7% would bench, 12% would sell. Harsh, but I expected there to be some, to be fair. Um, Rashford slander is brain dead, says Manchild. Form doesn't make a player bad and neither does having to play through injury. We should support Marcus in this time, says Manchild. Um, Curtis, welcome to the Members Club. Thank you very much. And um, faceless accounts will take out of context clips, says Mario Franco. And Thomas says, I've been saying for months, my biggest problem with Rashford is the attitude he presents both new and young players. If he doesn't care, why should they? Says Thomas Hopley. Um, next player we're looking at is Harry Maguire. Now, just before we talk about Harry Maguire, I've got a bit of breaking news on Harry Maguire. He has cut, he has, he's coming back from injury. Um, he's coming back from injury. Yes. What are you talking about, you twat? He is coming back from injury. He came back from injury. He played for Manchester United against Liverpool. However, he has withdrawn from the England squad because of an injury. Uh, you can vote in the live chat, mate. They 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 um, they come out in a moment. But uh, Maguire's one's not out yet because I've brisk smelt bench. Um, he's left the current England squad. He won't play against Belgium. He's had a recurrence of an injury and he's going to have a scan. Um Harry Maguire is actually picking up more injuries than he ever has. Over the last 18 months, he's actually had quite a few injuries, which he never, ever had. And I'm going to bring that in here because I think it's worth mentioning that as he winds down his career, he is older than Raphael Varane. He's actually 32 in May. No. No, he's, he's just turned 31, March. I, I read it as May. Um, Harry Maguire is 31. I think Harry Maguire, if he wants to elongate his England career, needs to go to a club where he's not playing as much football because he's starting to pick up a lot of injuries. He's had um, a hamstring injury from September to October. He had a groin injury from December to uh, February and now he's picked up another injury as well. So that's three injuries this season that Harry Maguire has picked up and they're all muscle injuries, hamstring, groin and whatever this one is as well. Um, but regardless of injury, this is a sell for me. Uh, he should have gone last summer. No issue with why he didn't go. The club wouldn't pay his wages. He should have gone last summer. He should go this summer. 
He's not a modern centre-back. He's never going to become a modern centre-back at 31. He has his attributes and they can be very useful as we saw against Liverpool. But this is the time to sell Harry Maguire because if we don't sell him this summer, what are you keeping him for? Because you just there'll be no value. There'll be no value in next summer. So it, ha it has to be a sell this summer. 70% of you would sell him. 21% would keep him as a bench option, which is a bit higher than I maybe thought. 7% of you would start him. So that's how you feel about that one. Now, this is a bit of a controversial one. We've basically thrown in not every player. Like, you won't see Menu in this poll. You won't see um, Rasmus or Ganacho, But you will see Luke Shaw. So why is Luke Shaw in there? Because basically what we've done tonight is we're bringing in players that over the last few weeks, some of you, not just one, have said you would sell this summer. So I'm bringing some of these out left field ones. I mean, I think this is a joke. For me, Luke Shaw shouldn't be sold. But there's many people saying, well, he's always injured. So what's the point? Um, some people don't even rate him as a player. Um, remember to get your chats in. We'll read those out. Uh, your super chats, sorry. And uh, we'll read some of these out as well. Marvin AM is a member, says Luke Shaw needs to go. Uh, Stavage says he'd start him. Uh, he already don't have any value, says Demon D Home. I think he's talking about Maguire. Sell if we buy a new left back. Keep if we don't, says Adidas Per. Shaw's still the best, says Savage. A bench option because of injury, says Drip Football. Well, for me, I'm a massive fan of Luke Shaw. And not because he leaks the team to me, because he never did. I just think I've been saying it on this channel for years, even when you had people taking a pop at his weight. Um, quite prominent voices in the fan community and in the punditry community went in on Shaw very, very early. And I stuck up for him. I stuck up for him. I, I think he's a really good left back. He can play left centre back. I think his stamina levels are fantastic. The only negative with Luke Shaw is his injury record, which, which I absolutely agree with. Um, Therefore, I'm in that position of would I sell Luke Shaw this summer? Because if he's going to continue to be injury prone, no one's going to buy him in a year's time. So I either I either keep him and risk that or I cash in this summer. Um, I think, again, unless Luke Shaw is knocking on my door saying he wants to leave Manchester United, I've got absolutely no intention of selling him. None at all. Um, experience, quality... It's all about what we can do about injuries. And, and and my get out here is it's not like Maguire's not been injured loads or Lindelof or Martinez or Casemiro or Rashford or anybody else. We've had loads of injuries this season. And maybe, maybe the physical and medical department is just flawed. And maybe if we get that right, then people won't get injured as much. But uh, for me, it has to be a keep. Um, start 49% of you. Bench 24% of you, sell 26% of you. I mean, look, he's still got 50% of you saying to keep him and start him. He's got 25% saying keep him and bench him. So 75% of you basically are going to keep him. But 26% saying sell is uh, rather alarming for somebody like Luke Shaw. We have to sell some players who will give us a good fee, says Joe Brindley. I completely agree with you on that one. Um, we have. Um, We've done Casemiro. I mean, again, from one controversial figure to another, this is what this show was going to always be about tonight. I told you you wanted to tune into this. Whether you're in live or you're not live, get your comments in if you're not live. This was always going to be a show where we weren't going to shirk it. We were going to work it. And we certainly are doing that. So, Anthony, where do you sit on this one? Is he a starter? Is he a bench option? Or is he a sell? Now, look, straight away, that pulls up for you. Honestly, you're not going to sell him. You're not going to sell him because there is no option that's going to be out there to sell him. We can't sell him. Even if somebody rings up and says, we'll give you 20 million for him. We can't. We can't take 20 million. He's only been here two years and we paid 85 million. We can't sell him for 20 million. It will destroy us financial fair play wise. We've got to keep him for another year. Um, what you could do is loan him, which is which I would class as a sell. So... Do you want him to be starting next season? Do you want him to be on the bench next season? Or have you given up on him altogether? Get in the chat. Now, for me, controversial, but I saw a glimpse against Liverpool of what potentially could be. There is no doubt that off-field incidents could be playing mentally for Anthony. There is no doubt that there is a naivety to him that he doesn't seem to get what playing for United is all about. It's a little bit erratic. Um, it needs to calm down, in my opinion. It needs to calm down and focus on the basics of, 
I'm a right winger. When I get the ball, find a pass. When I, when I haven't got the ball, stay in position and work hard. Because I think he overcomplicates it all the time. I think he's one of those players that he'll shoot from 30 yards when there's a pass on. That's infuriating. It's the same at other clubs, but at Manchester United, the fan base is learned. It is, it is, it is intelligent. And if you get the ball and you're in Anthony's position and you're 30 yards out and you shoot, you frustrate people because you won't score. But if you get the ball in that position and you play it into Rasmus's feet, who lays it off and Bruno smacks it in, people will appreciate the second assist, the pass that you played to Rasmus. And that's what he needs to do. If he can't do that, he will leave. Now, the question is, can he do that? You know, we mentioned about whether Rashford can do it, whether Bruno can do it. The question is whether Anthony can do it. And he doesn't have the CV that Rashford and Bruno have in the Premier League. So I think for Anthony, um, I'm, I'm not sitting on the fence, but I think the next two months are key. You ask, For me, ask me at the end of May, because if he's not involved in the first team between now and the end of May, it's got to be a loan deal in the summer. But if he can work his way back in and play well, then obviously I'm going to keep him as a bench option. Uh, get rid of him. The youth is better than Anthony, says J. Dot. And we, yeah, well, you know, that's fair enough. 48% of you would keep, his, keep him as a... Well, it's interesting here because it's not a sell, although it is close. This is the best one we've had. Only 9% of you would start him. 43% of you would sell him slash loan him. But 48% of you, narrowly beating sell, is keep him as a bench option. So there you go. The people have spoken. Well done on that one. Uh, next up, we've got, um, might be quite an easy one, this one. Uh, you know, we, we've got to be fair. We've got to do them all. Uh, Brandon Williams. Some of you might not even remember he was a player at Manchester United. Um, maybe over-promoted at times, certainly overpaid. Uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, of course, signing off on a long-term contract for what was reported to be £50,000 a week that he has never, ever looked like. I mean, that, again, there are a catalyst, there are catalogues, sorry, of bad wages and, and contracts been handed out, but that one takes the biscuit. He'd had a glimpse of first-team football and Man United handed him a long-term contract on 50k a week. Um, he's done reasonably well at Ipswich, but he's not a 50k a week at fullback, and that may still be a problem for Manchester United because as I check on... Um, his contract now. I think that there is an option to buy for West Ham. Not for West Ham, for Ipswich. He still has got... Well, he's got one year left on his contract. Um, he's got one year... An option to... There's an opt... Oh, sorry. Ipswich have an option to buy. And I think Man United have got an option of another year. But yeah, I mean, this is 100% sell. Um, I don't know what his future is going to be in the game, but it can't be at Man United. Um, I think maybe he can play for a lower Premier League club, but um, yeah, it's got to be a, it's got to be a sell. Eighty eight percent of you say sell, three percent say start, and nine percent nine percent say bench, which is interesting. I I, I just don't see it. I, ju I just don't see a Man United player there. And I would say the same for a couple of other players that we're going to do in a moment as well. Um, interesting one, this one from one extreme to the other. What are your thoughts on this? Um, look, for me, it's I'm not going to mess about on this one. Again, a little bit like Casemiro. If he knocks on the door and says, I want to leave Manchester United to go to Saudi Arabia, and it has to be that, then obviously, you know, you're probably going to let him go. The difference with Varane is we get no money. For whatever reason, we haven't renewed his contract. So he would walk out the door for nothing. Our best centre-back at the club could walk out the door for nothing. Now, this one scares me and terrifies me because if we let Varane walk out the door for nothing, then we're just the same as the Glazers who did it with Herrera and who did it with De Gea. We are saving money without looking at the value of the player in the dressing room, on the pitch. We should not be letting him walk out the door for nothing to save 300k a week. He is 100% a player that we should be keeping at the club, in my opinion. If he had two years left on his deal... And he put his hand up and said, I want to go to Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia offers us £30 million. Do the deal. But this is a player that could still start for Bayern Munich. This is a player that is still our best centre-back. It's easily a start for me. It's easily a keep for me. But I fear United will let him go. Um, 
What have we got in the chat? We've got 69% of you starting him. We've got 14% of you benching him. So that's 84%, basically. 83% keeping him. 17% uh, of you would sell him. But I, 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 just, I just don't get this one. I, I really don't get this one. I think it's... He's not even got a monetary value to us. We're literally just shedding wages when he's actually our best centre-back. You can't let your best centre-back walk out the club for nothing. Um, this has got to be new contract, reduced wages, stay at the football club. We need to keep him. He's too experienced. He's too good. He's too influential in the dressing room. He's won the World Cup. He's won the Champions League. It's absolutely massive for people like Rasmus and Kobe Mainu and Martinez and, and everybody else to have that. And I know Martinez has won the World Cup, but he didn't even start, did he? You know, Varane is somebody that Martinez can still very much learn from. So for me, it's, it's, it's a keep. Um, this one's a little bit um, more interesting because... I, I saw th something today that not only is Malassia struggling with injury, but he's also struggling mentally as well. Well, I absolutely sympathise with that. I'm sure you are. He hasn't played in a year. Um, I still think there's something very, very sinister about Malassia's injury because I can't think of a footballer in the modern game that has missed a whole year of football. He got injured last May. Like, I, I was looking at this the other day. Malassia got injured the, got injured last May. Um, it, it, it's incredible, really. And, you know, I do, rem I, I do remember um, that, you know, it, I remember what he was like before. And there was a lot of question marks. He was definitely bought in as a pers prospective left back to be an understudy to Luke Shaw. He did some good bits. He did some bad bits. You know, he, he got caught out of position a few times. It was at fault of goal for, for a couple of times as well. But you are talking about a year ago, trying to remember what sort of player he is. When a player's had a year out of football, it's a concern. When a player's had a year out of football, it's, it's catastrophic. He's 24. Like, he's 24 years of age and he's missed a year of football. I think it's a, it's, it's a real, real risk. Um, I don't see us getting rid of him. And I would keep him. Um, I'm not of a mind to say get rid of a player that's been out of football for a year. Because who's going to take him anyway? Maybe you could loan him out. But I think the question mark about Malassia is more about whether he is going to play again. Or whether we've got some sort of horrific injury here that's basically going to end his career because I just don't know what what's going on but for me it's it's a strong it's a strong keep um and see what happens next season um 57% of you keep him as a bench 7% keep him as a start and 36% of you would get rid all together um Inut says uh, Harry Maguire got an injury in the England squad. Yep, we've, we've spoken about it previously. He has got an injury. We don't know the depths of that so far, but he has got an injury. Um, Victor Lindelof, he's going to have a scan this week, by the way. Not Lindelof, Maguire. Victor Lindelof, another interesting one. Um, I think with Lindelof, again, we, we have to buy, in my opinion, two centre-backs. This is going to be transformative for Manchester United. What I want to see next season is what Liverpool have. Gomez, Canate, Matip, Van Dijk, Kwanzaa. Five centre-backs who can all play on the halfway line. Man United have got two. Varane and Malassia. You've then got Maguire and Evans who want to play on the edge of the box. And Lindelof who can just about play somewhere in between. If you buy Tadebo Branthwaite and you've got Varane and uh, Martinez, you're set. Why do you keep Lindelof as a fifth-choice centre-back? Why does he want to stay? So what I do with Lindelof is I sell him. I call him into the office and I say, look, Victor, you've been a really good servant to us. You've had some good games for us. But the way we're going is halfway line, high line. I don't feel that that's your best quality. And therefore, I'm bringing in two new centre-backs. You will be fifth choice. Now, do you want to be fifth choice? He'll say no. Let's let's sort out a deal. Shake hands. So that that's what I do. That's what I do. Of course, if we're only buying one centre back, I'm probably going to keep him because I can probably get more money for for Harry Maguire. But 
if I'm buying two centre backs, it, it's got to be a go for me. And I, I think we need to do we need we do need to buy two centre backs. But he has been a good servant to the club. Um, Lindelof, five percent of you would start, forty one percent of you would bench, and fifty four percent of you would sell. Um, which I think is about right, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Next one's going to be a bit divisive. Uh, Mabry, in fact, the next the next three are going to be very decisive, actually. So, Mabry, wh where do you stand on this one? I think he is a player that... And I don't want to say I told you so, because it did get quite vicious at the time, and it's not my style to do it this way. Uh, please do smash a like on the video, by the way, because you've absolutely been fantastic. I don't think I've worked you lot this hard ever in the history of the United Stand, and you have really dictated it. So smash a like on the video because you've been fantastic watching live. And as I said, if you're not live, just get it in the comments and we, people can read it. Um, last summer, he played on the tour and he played well. And lots of people were saying he's got a future at the club. And I said he hasn't. And a lot of people got very, very abusive about it. And I said he hasn't got a future at this football club because he hasn't got the quality or temperament. And it won't happen. Um, he's way too hot-headed. And this has cost him at Sevilla. It's cost him under Ten Hag. He's way... Look, he's just too erratic in the way that he plays. What was that game he played for us this season where he probably should have been sent off? Burnley. No, no, I think he played well against Burnley. There was a game he played where he got booked and we really should have took him off. And, you know, for me, I like the player, but... He's not a Man United player. And also, what I will say about Mabry is that th there are players that are 18, like Malassia, that have literally grabbed the opportunity by the horns. And, uh, you know, maybe Aban's going to do that as well. He's still only 21 and he's only just 21. So, look, there is no definitive here. Maybe he does come back, but... I just think he got a little bit over-hyped in the summer. I actually haven't seen where he fits into this team. So I think it's time to cash in and cash out. Um, and I also think for him, he has got a career in football. I don't know where it is, but I look at someone like Andres Pereira. I said the same. There was a time with Pereira where I thought he was going to be a first-team player for years to come. And it, and it didn't go that way. And I, I got to the point with Pereira where I was like, He's definitely got a future in the game. I just don't know whether it's at Preston North End or Crystal Palace. And it ended up being Fulham. So, Mabry, I would not be surprised in two or three years' time if he was playing for Lille or he was playing for Fulham. But it, it's not Man United. It's not going to be Man United. 3% um, of you would start him. 24% of you would bench him. And 73% of you would sell him. There we go. Mojo's in the chat. Absolute legend. He's just gifted 10 memberships. Make sure you give some love to Mojo. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, he's delivered again like Postman Pat. Um, welcome to the new members. Uh, get your badge in. And thanks for all the super chats, by the way. There's been a lot of people getting involved. Right. Our next one is going to be a, a sentimental one. I told you the next three were going to be big. So, Johnny Evans. Johnny Evans is... Can I just tell you his age? It does matter. Johnny Evans is 36. He'll be 37 halfway through next season. At what point do you say that was an amazing comeback, renaissance, final curtain, whatever you want to call it? Because I just don't know how to answer this one. There are two things. I always start on the proposed negative. Johnny Evans can only play on the edge of the box. He cannot play on the halfway line. So straight away next season, if you keep him and you need to use him, you've got to go to the edge of the box. So the gap opens up again. So for me, that's number one reason. It's tactical. He can't play the way we want to play. There's no point in having Johnny Evans as your third or fourth choice centre-back. You're better off having somebody who can play on the halfway line because that makes you still play the way you want to play. We've got to, at some point overrule sentimentality and focus and prioritise style of play. If we want to play high up the pitch, compact, pressing football, 
every game we've got to play with a high line. We can't go, well, let's keep Johnny for a few games because we're going to drop off. So that's number one. Number two is 36 and a half. Like, how long can he actually keep going? We're Manchester United. Um, number three, I just think that we could just keep him as a fifth choice centre-back. We could buy two centre-backs. We could sell Lindelof and Maguire. And we could keep him as a fifth choice centre-back with a view to his experience and personality around the place. is massive and he has a big influence. I'm leaning towards the fifth... Well, if we sell Maguire and Lindelof, I'd happily keep Evans as fifth choice with maybe a coaching role being developed out of him. That's probably what I would do. So I would probably say bench. But I haven't got a problem with selling or retiring. Maybe retire. I don't know. 58% um, of you would sell. 38% of you would bench. 5% of you would start. And I think that's about right. I'm sort of, I'm stuck on the fifth choice centre-back or letting him retire. Because he, he, reti he won't, I don't think he'll play again. Well, then again, the way he's played this season, he could go and play. I think he could go and, I think he could go and do another year for somebody that plays on the edge of the box. But um, you don't know what his plans are, do you? Too hot-headed. Too, uh, JT says, maybe he's too hot-headed, but we idolise Canton, Arkeen and Rooney. You're, you're seriously not comparing Mabry to Keane and Cantona and Rooney. Like, it's one thing to be hot-headed and three of the best players that have ever played for this club. But hot-headed and questionable talent, come on, it's not a good mix. Um, right, next one. Probably one of the, my favourite ones of the show because I'm intrigued, like I have been with all of these with you, to see where we're going to go. So, Wan Basaka. Where do you go with Wan Basaka? Start, bench, sell. Um, again, it's multi layered for me. I think that with Wan Basaka, we have to raise money. You know, I go back to the comment from. Um, Joe Brindley, who said, one of our members, we have to sell some players uh, to get some good fees in. We can't keep everybody. We have to make some ruthless decisions because we need to raise about 150 million quid. And if we're keeping McTominay and we're keeping Rashford and we're keeping Bruno and we're keeping Lindelof, then where is this 150 million quid coming from? There has to be some players that come in. Now, if we're going to go for Frimpong, I'm selling wan -Bissaka. It's as simple as that. But, as we saw against Liverpool, there is a real value in him as an option in certain games when there are injuries. I'm conflicted because I think over the last year, when called upon, he's delivered. But going forward, he's severely lacking. I think if you are West Ham or you are Wolves, or you are Crystal Palace, you probably look at Wan-Bissaka and say, yes, please, there's 30 million quid. But for Manchester United, in the way we want to play with inverted fullbacks, he isn't that. Um, I think on this, if I'm being completely honest, I'm, I'm sort of like, do you keep him as a backup or do you sell him? And I'm thinking we've got to raise money. If we were in a position where we didn't need to raise money, probably just going to keep him. But we need to raise money. And there is interest in him because he's a good player. And this is where the ruthlessness comes in. We've got to raise some money. Um, and also, in fairness to him, I think he should be playing first-team football in the Premier League for somebody. I do. I, you know, we talk about keeping these players as bench options. And maybe that works for Johnny Evans. Maybe that works for Scott McTominay because they're, they're, they've come through the youth setup and they'd rather be a bench player here than a first-team player elsewhere. But for someone like Aaron wan it's all right as saying, well, let's keep him as a bench option. He's good enough to be starting. He's got an opinion in all of this. And again, I would say to Aaron wan even though I've made my mind up, I'd call him into the office and I'd say, um, you've done really well for us again. Loved what you did against Liverpool. Um, and really, really like you as part of the team. But I can't offer you a first team place next season. And it would be disrespectful of me just to assume that that's what you want. Um, what are your thoughts, Aaron? And I think he will say, 
I want to play first team football. At which point I would say, well, look, let's look at what's on the table. Let's see what offers there are. Because if you want to play first team football, I can't honestly guarantee you that without injuries. So let's see what's on the table and, and take it from there. And I think that's that's what I would do. Uh, Noir says, uh, great show tonight, Mark. Thank you very much. 23% um, of you would start him, which is very high. 45% um, of you is the majority would keep him as a bench option. And 32% of you would sell him. I think for me, sell is the logical thing because I think he will want to play first team football. And I think we need to raise money. But I think that's probably the most interesting one of the night, if we're being honest. Um, great show tonight, says Nyar. Blake Williamson has been a member for five months. Big shout out. Harry Andrews says, keep Evan Marks. He knows what United's all about. Thank you very much for that. Uh, majority must go. No point in keeping can't do us, says Terence Roberts. Uh, Enzumo says, give Anthony another full drama-free season, then decide. Um, and J Dot says, get rid of him. The youth is better than Anthony. So we had a contrasting couple of opinions there. Uh, there's one more I need to do. I've purposely kept it back to the end because um, it's... Uh, I think there's only one more to do. Uh, yeah, make sure you smash a like on the video. It'd be great to get 2,000 likes. Um, I think I know which one this, one this way will go. What I will say is... Is he actually going to get a chance at Manchester United? Like, where is he going to start for Man United? Like, I think this is the question mark with Ahmad now. Obviously, he can't play against Brentford because of the stupid red card. But where is he going to get in? Where is he going to get in? Because for me, it's a, it's a stone cold start. Like, I, I really think that there's a player there to work with, much the same as there is with Maynou and Ganacho. Obviously, he's a bit further behind than them. But I think there's a player there that if he was 18... And he'd come through the youth setup, we would be even more excited than we are already. So I think there's a player there. I just don't know where we're going to find it, where it's going to be, because you've got Ganacho, you've got um, Rashford, you've got Anthony, um, and then you've got Ahmad. And, you know, he's going to be 22 this summer. So, you know, he is playing catch up a little bit. The injury at the start of the season, a couple of loans. A few people have said loan him. I don't I don't think loaning him is can be another option with Ahmad. I think it's got to be you're part of the first team, you're fighting for a first team place, or it's time to go. He can play more centrally as well. You know, a few people have said he can play as a 10. I think he can. But I wanna I wanna He is small. I'll take that on Grant. He is small, but that's not a restrictor. Messi was small, Bernardo Silva's small, Iniesta was small. That's not that's not an excuse. We're not the best at using small players over the years. It's not traditionally been, been something that Man United really do well. But I think with Ahmad, definitely keep him. Probably ends up being a bench option. But we've got to find a way to give him, get him into the team. And I'm a little bit confused as to where he's going to fit in. Look, some people can just be a bench option. Some people can be a player that come on for 20 minutes and make things happen and they can make a career out of it. But uh, yeah, 100% for me, it's a, it's a keep. 34% uh, of you would start him. 57% of you would bench him. And 9% of you would sell him. Uh, there we go. If you're looning Anthony, then you can certainly keep Aman, says Daryl. I think next season's a big season for him. Uh, NS says Frimpong would struggle and is a nightmare in a back four. But as I've said so many times with um, Frimpong, we are not going to play a back four if we buy the centre-backs that we need to have. If Frimpong played for Liverpool, he'd be perfect. Look at what they do with Trent. Like, people obsess about Frimpong being a, a wing-back. If he was at Liverpool... In fact, this is how good I think Frimpong is. If Liverpool get Alonso and Trent goes to Real Madrid... Number one choice for to replace Trent will be Frimpong. Obviously, I know they've got Bradley coming through, but that's what they'd look to do. Um, Frimpong's fine in about four, as long as you've got two centre-backs that are mobile and good. And he can then be part of the midfield, which is exactly what we have been doing with Delo and Shaw on the limited times we've played Martinez and Varane. Amand Varan Shaw to stay, sell the rest for a reset, says Terence Robbins. Thank you very much. Um, what about Palistri, says A2. Um, 
I haven't thrown Palestri in there because I think he's gone. I think he's done. Um, I think the agent of Palestri sold him the minute he said what he said in January. Um, I don't see a way back for Palestri. I've never really spoken about it. I like the player. I agree with people that, you know, I think he's the only winger that we've got that actually looks to put crosses in. But Ten Hag's never rated him enough to really give him a run in the team. He's doing reasonably well on loan. And I think that we will cash in for Palistri in the summer. I see no way back at all. I don't see a way back. I mean, his agent basically said in January that um, Ten Hag destroyed his career. So I, I just don't, I don't see a way back for Palistri, um, which is why I didn't include him in. I didn't forget. Uh, anyway, look, fantastic show tonight. Make sure you smash a like on the video and subscribe. Uh, you've been absolutely fantastic tonight. We kept you very, very busy, but that's what we wanted it to be. Keep Bench Cell, Summer 2024, Man United edition. You've been brilliant tonight, and it's only in an international break on a Sunday night that we could ever do that show. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm on the morning show tomorrow. Don't normally do the morning show. I'm normally doing the Ben Foster fill-in, but I'm not on it tomorrow. Um, got some things going on. So I'm on the 10 a.m. on a Monday show tomorrow, and we've already got a bit of news to bring in, which is a bit exciting. So 10 a.m. tomorrow, I will tell you what that's all about. Uh, we've also got Fabrizio Romano on the show tomorrow lunchtime about quarter to two. He will be talking to us about Frimpong and everything like that. So a big start to the week. And of course, we're building up to a very, very big April for Manchester United. We've got six games in April. It's going to be hectic. We needed this time to take a breath. Uh, Ahmad can have some impact as Nacho, given the chance as an international. Thank you very much. You've all been legends tonight. I hope you have a, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Enjoy, stay safe, take care. I'm not putting Mason Mount in there. That's bloody ridiculous. He's not even been here a year. Speak to you all later.